Hey guys, it's Neil and welcome to Hardcore Linux. Now it's been a while since I uploaded my last video, but uh, let's get started. Today we're going to talk about LDAP servers. LDAP stands for Lightweight Recreate Access Protocol. Now it's used for central authentication server. Let's take an example. Uh, suppose uh, in your organization you have three servers, okay? Jira, Confluence and Central SSH server. Now there, uh, as an employee, there is one way that uh, you have to manage all of the passwords and usernames by yourself. But there is an optimal way that you can implement or your system administrator can implement an LDAP server which will not take care of all of those servers for you. So using one username and one password, you can log into those servers. So enough talk about the LDAP theory. Now let's jump into the practical session. First of all, you have to open up your terminal, as you can see in here. Uh, since I'm working in a project, uh, a Java based project, I already got a LDAP server. So if I just press LDAP search dash X, it will gonna output me some of the results. Okay. We're gonna get into um, those details. But first, let me show you how to install that server. So the command for if you are using a Ubuntu or Debian based system, the command will be sudo apt-get install. Uh, I think it's slab d yes and ldap oops ldap utilities okay utils. You give it your password and oh I just misspell it. It should be slab d. Slapped, yeah. So as you can see, those two packages are already installed in my system. Now, you have to configure the LDAP server, right? Because it's just installed. So, I'd like to type sudo dpkg reconfig slab d. If I press, after this, this screen will pop up and it says, if you enable this option, no internal configuration or database will be created for this. So we need a basic database for us. So I'm going to just create. Actually, you have to do all of the defaults to yes, to be honestly, for a simple and uh, for a simple LDAP server. Let's um, the next option is you have to type the DNS or the domain name. And, uh, and in this case, uh, since it's a test server, I just go for example.com. You can just type in your organization's domain next organization name that's pretty simple now it will ask for the administrator password now you have to enter it now there is three database options we're gonna choose mdb since it's default and the hdb and the bdb oh my goodness those are creepy names those are slower than mdb that's all i know to be honestly and we're gonna press ok when the uh, slab is prog, database removed, nope. And do you want to move the old databases? Uh, in this case, I don't want to do that, but yeah, let's go for the yes, because yeah, why not? So if I just press for LDAP dash X, LDAP dash X, I can see that my current database is gone and I have got a completely new database. As you can see there is no Shagni or blah, 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 should have a new wish. Okay, now, Let's go to some uh, real deep and technical part. If you're crazy enough and or you have tons of time, you can write LDI files and manually configure the whole LDAP server. Okay. But since we're living in 2019 and soon it will be 2020, we are definitely running short of time. So I'm going to install a package, you know, which is called LAM LDAP. account manager as you can see and it says it's already configured now let's get into some of the deeper parts because we need to configure those two now let's go to our LDAP server which is I believe HC LDAP and yeah HC LDAP LS and we have, we have to configure the LDAP.config file so since I already configured this one thing as my thinking this yeah just let me just open up Vim and when you open the Vim, you have to type sudo, of course, and in initial stage, you will get something like this. Okay, 
you just have to remove the, the pound symbol before those two and this will be your base dn which is example.com if you are on a live server then it will be your organization's name and this will be the uri in this case it is a local host on a, a real server it will be the ip address of that specific machine so let me quit that because i already configured it next up we have to go for i think we don't have to go for but just let me check out you know it's freezing out there man now let me go for ldap account manager there is some interesting stuff we don't want to touch the apache config we just want to touch the config file which is in there oops it's empty so most probably we want to configure the apache config file I, oh no this one yeah you can see this is the directory of LDAP account manager now let's let me drag my window as you can see I am working with project right now if you type localhost slash lam oops nothing to map here 404 not found okay we are on a port which is basically a tomcat server port now we got this part you know now you just set up your password right your LDAP password now we are logged into this thing but since uh, I configured it earlier there's some more configuration which you have to do so when this uh, page occurs you have to go for the LAM configuration edit server profiles default password is LAM okay now as you can see you have to configure those tabs the tree suffix uh, we uh, we got no LTS support currently so it will be no and uh, now yeah we have to go for the login method you can go for a traditional LDAP search method but I am going for a fixed list method which is in my case admin and my DC is example and com dot com that means example dot com if you just break into it, it uh, your base DN will be example dot com okay now just go for the account types okay now um, in this case there is a little learning curve because uh, in account type as you can see I only got users because in my application we just have to maintain uh, the login for users and I'll come to that later but in default case uh, there will be a group I mean to say yeah there you have to define a uh, Unix group if you are in that case uh, let me know in the comment section and I'm gonna make a simple separate video on the groups how to make a group and how you can basically configure the groups based on LDAP server okay and now let's go for the modules and now we have got there only one module which is a person module and as you can see we can uh, add a tons of module in here one of the important modules um, is the unix postfix module and as you can see we can have a shadow module over there ssh public key module over there okay so those things so if you are really interested into those things just uh, let me know in the comment section so basically that's the basic part so just let me go to it let me log into my LDAP server now now <coughs> now we are logging and it will gonna create a, a suffix for us which is the people and we are done with the create so now changes are created successfully now we have got this user so, so let me just quickly create a user over there okay so we are going for username will be shagnik s first name of course my name it is shagnik last name sharkar oops and you can fill up the rest of the stuff okay so let me just enter my super secret password and press ok and ok so as you can see we have got one user now now uh, let's go with the tree view let's go on the tree view over there you can get the basic of an LDAP server like how it works you know I mean it's completely a tree that's why it's called a uh, directory access protocol as you can see we have got a directory called OU equal to people and in here we have got Shagnik shortcut and all of its details now up next let me just open up my terminal and let me type again ldap search dash x and as you can see yeah there we are this is mine 
account currently and as you can see I have successfully registered an entry in my LDAP server now this is the basics of LDAP you know you just implement an LDAP server now what you can do with it now you can basically do a tons of stuff with it uh, like as I say it's used for central authentication so um, in each and every of your application uh, oh, sorry web services like Jira or Confluence or in central SSI servers that means a basic basic SSI server uh, we have to configure these things okay now if you as I say if you guys are into that stuff uh, let me know in the comment section and I'm gonna make a separate video because uh, if I want to discuss uh, how to implement it on the SSH and uh, then it will be a really long discussion now once we created the elder server now I have got a tons of queries like the next question is how to do a authentication in a web app that you want to create right suppose you want to create a web app which will gonna authenticate using LDAP servers right so and in my case since I am a Java backend developer so my favorite technology is of course Java in this case scenario I'll be gonna using Spring Boot as you can see guys okay just let me go for the top okay there you go Eclipse. Okay. so let me just discuss the basic right excuse me so I have got a JSP page yeah some of you might might be feeling like yeah JSP is a really old technology yeah I got that but um, yeah it's a project that I am creating for fun only so JSP is good for me so just let me go there okay first of all you have to create a form a simple form okay now there is something uh, that I want to clear that uh, if you're in 2019 and you want to be a web developer a full stack web developer then you have to go for the Ajax and jQuery kind of stuff and I am not getting into that one okay otherwise it will not take a whole video now if you guys really wanted to uh, get in the deep of this stuff like how to create it from the scratch let me just know and I'll definitely make a video on that so let me go come to the controller and I think it's in controller and we have got a login controller right so yeah as a framework I am using Spring Boot it's a latest trend and yeah working on Spring Boot is not a pain in the ass it's really simple and there is a, there, <clears throat> yeah there is a learning curve of course so let me open up two of my classes one should be in the security package which is the authentication okay so this is the JNDI API some of you might know JNDI it's, a spe uh, it's specifically designed for directory access protocols servers so what you have to do you just um, for for the login purpose you just have to set up a class with a boolean variable which will gonna of course take two parameters username and password which you will gonna enter by the form on the on the login page right we are just implementing a hash map over there okay and this is kind of hardcore stuff like you have to do this okay because it's the JNDI template for LDAP yeah and get this thing pretty much easily to be honestly okay we are simply gonna put those things in this hash map then we are going for a direct context okay and if everything goes uh, in the right way then it will gonna connect to the LDAP server now since it's a boolean variable we are returning okay so if it's connect we're gonna return true otherwise it will gonna be false all of the codes are available in my github repo and the links will be in the description you can uh, if you're interested you can check it out okay now as you can see that um, on the login we have a request mapping for login that means whenever I press localhost colon 8080 which is a tomcat port it will gonna hit this one this will gonna go to the login page and now login page got all of the form stuff right the form has a URL <coughs> excuse me the, strand, the form has a URL uh, of is valid so it will I am creating a session for logout purpose now some of you might saying that why I don't use spring security to be honestly I try to use it but uh, in the current version I think there is a bug I read in slack overflow in a spring boot startup security there is but not in the spring security okay if I am wrong and you guys know how to do, uh, how to do that please let me know it will be a 
big help to be honestly yeah this step is quite a bit of simple i am just creating a object of auth which is gonna auto wired you know and this auth will gonna be calling this method and there is a statement if it's true then if it's true then return true then is value is true and return uh, is value now as you can see this is a uh, response body so this is not a normal form this is a ajax form that's why you can see there is any kind of string like in here I, i'm just going for the string and return login whatever so that uh, so um, that's the basic stuff in here okay so just let me open up my browser uh, pretty quick okay so uh, this is your login page right so if i just uh, yeah i think that's the user right and we got invalid credentials and we got an error awkward okay fine so just let me open up my terminal because i just turned the old database that is the problem so we have got cna shagnik shortcut this time that means i didn't fill up the form properly okay just okay why i'm doing this stuff just let me copy that stuff over here and paste it and it should be login as you can see we have got an error in the jquery because i um, because basically i dumped the old database but excuse me but if i go to the spring we got a big error over there because it's throwing me null for some kind of reason i have to debug that to be honestly uh now as you can see on the first side we have got shagni case and that, that's the super secret password okay and it says uh, incorrect password or username because uh, on the exception side i mean so on the try catch block as you can see there is uh, this exception over there and then when i just go for the right one it just go for connected and let me enter now i am not going into the js or ajax part that's basically js part or any kind of uh, front end part over there so i think that's it for the video i'm extremely sorry because uh, this video is not planned at all uh, if i misspell something i'm really sorry since uh, english is not my native language but i hope you enjoy that video and find something helpful in it if you find something helpful in it please uh, give it a like share with your friends and please subscribe and i wish all of you guys a merry christmas and in the last part of the video i just discovered my mic isn't connected so i'm really sorry for the bad audio quality of this video and thanks a lot guys for stay tuned really appreciate that as always it's hardcore linux signing off peace guys